We got married, we had a daughter, her name was Sarah, but we did not execute on a Jewish thing. It's typical, we've heard that tonight. Um, and the reason we didn't was because I had no idea what that meant. You know, my parents, both first generation Jews, um, were raised in. First generation. Immigrant. First generation. Parents, children of immigrants. Okay. That makes them first generation. But not so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first generation, oh yeah, first generation Americans, first generation Americans. Just clarify. They were both raised in observant Jewish homes, but um, they grew up to be, you know, leftist academic intellectuals who who left religion behind immediately after they left their parents' homes, and. Um, as we were, as my brothers and I were growing up, we had no religion in our house. We um, we celebrated the occasional Passover Seder and, of course, Hanukkah, right? Um, but never Shabbat. I did not go to Hebrew school. Um, I was, did not have a bar mitzvah. I did not know um, Aleph from Beth. Um, other than you know, other than you know, Woody Allen movies and and Chinese food on Christmas, I didn't know anything about Jews. <laughs> But so how we get so how we get here? Okay. So I don't know how we got here, but I know where it started. Like many people here have mentioned it, it started at the Gan. Had a good friend who had a background in early childhood education, and she was picking a nursery school for her kids, and she selected at us. And I thought she's done all the homework. We'll do the same thing. So we got here. Right. So we sent our we sent Sarah to the Gan, um, and. You know, you send your kid to the Gan, you go to the, the kids' Shabbat. Shabbat. You go to the Tat Shabbat, you go to the uh, Friday Shabbat, and then you come to um, the monthly Friday night service where, you know, Rabbi Miller and Robin Helsner would lead. And um, we met Mary, and we attended one of her uh, workshops. Um, and we met John and Renee, whose wife is not here. Shame on her. Um, but, uh, and so, you know, we slowly became a part of the Addis Israel community. And then we decided we needed to do something about our daughters and their conversion. So I spoke to Rabbi Wolver, who was their senior rabbi at the time. And he did have a question for me, which was, have you considered converting? And the answer was simple, not. I had not considered it at the time. But I told him I would start taking some general Judaism classes, and I did. And I eventually kind of graduated from that and joined the conversion class. And we decided to convert. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I skipped something. We decided. Yes. So we decided to have our kids converted. And actually, that was a great story. We planned to have a little party after the conversion. 
And so we got a date set, and I would come down. We did the clock from here. And we came down to Addis to <coughs> dunk the kids in the mikvah. Uh, Sarah was four. Uh, Soledad was six months. And we you know, go down to the mikvah, and um, we're, all get, we're all ready to go. And Sarah, four-year-old, refused. Absolutely would not get naked, would not go into that water, <laughs> would not, you know, take off any jewelry or shave off her. You know, she was not going to do this. Um, Soleil, of course, was six months, and she was uh, more polite. But, <laughs> and I said to Rabbi Wolper, I said, oh, oh, I'm so frustrated. I am just going to date this four-year-old, and I am just going to dump her in the water, we're going to get over with. And Rabbi Wolper said to me, oh, oh, no, no, no. We're Jews, we do not do forced conversions. <laughs> so we actually, so we did have, we do everything with a party in our house. Everything's got to have a party. And so we, we went back to the party afterwards and you, you guys were there. Um, and we said, uh, how did people ask, how did it go? After that, we started receiving Shabbat dinner invitations, and then you start reciprocating, and suddenly you have this community of families with whom you're constantly celebrating Shabbat. And, um, and that's when I decided to, I was done with Hebrew up to three, and I had done all the intro courses, and I signed up for that conversion class, totally non-committal. But by the end of it, we were pretty much facing Jewish kids and have an active Jewish life, and I decided I'm in. So. So you converted, and Sarah converted, and you know we really became even more enmeshed in the community. Um, Maria was the co-president of the Parent Association of God, and became the mikvah lady. Another mikvah lady. She became a mikvah lady, full circle. You go, you dunk, then you know you do one teacher. So, you know, at least I can attest, being the make the lady, you get to meet people at very significant times in their lives, that conversion, or a bride, or groom, or just someone celebrating a milestone in their life is really significant. <coughs> and, um, and for Mike, really, as we said before, he had his own conversion. When I was taking my conversion class, he had to go to all the meetings, and uh, by then I was done with, like, Hebrew up to level three, and Mike was beginning to learn Aleph and so the people in the class kept looking at us and wondering, wait a minute, which one of you is converting? <laughs> um, but it, it really, the turning point, I think, for you was when your father passed away, and Mike started coming every day to say Kaddish, and then shortly after that, he started studying Talmud with a former colleague of his who was both brilliant and very patient. Mm -hmm. And then he added morning phone calls with a client in Crown Heights with whom he has 6 a.m. meetings discussing some piece of learning. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, look, learning, Jewish learning is a big, is a big part of my life and, and of our, of our um, Jewish home. But it's really, you know, our Jewish home really centers on our, our community and our, our community of friends. Um, our Friday night uh, dinners, which are which are very festive, um, and we even have a group, our Friday night halura group, that meets probably once a month, and the kids call it the Chav, the Chav, and it's been going on for quite a long time. Now we've celebrated the name mitzvahs and babies being born, and now we even figure out there are kids that are going to be soon having the name mitzvahs. And they've never had life without these families that get together. And it's very, very joyous. So, um, you know, 23 years, oh, yeah, Camp Ramah, of course. You want me to talk about Camp Ramah? Well, the only thing we're going to say about Camp Ramah, promotion for Camp We send our kids to Camp Ramah. It gives you, it gives you eight weeks of total freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that solidifies your Jewish kids, you know, identity. And we all look forward to it. And it also led Mike to pick up the guitar because he wants to lead camp style Shabbat services in Havdalah. It's a work in progress, though. Yes. So 23 years, 23 years ago, no, 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 25 years ago, I said I want to have Jewish kids, and 
at the time, I clearly had no idea what that meant, but um, I think maybe I've got some idea of it now. <laughs>